In 2002, I saw one of the worst fights I've ever seen in Georgia State Prison. So let's talk about it. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Shout out to all the law-abiding criminals out there. As always, you know what to do. If this is your first time on the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today, guys, it is story time. It's been brought to my attention by a few of my subscribers and everything, man, that people really want to see and hear about some of the stories and some of the things that I've experienced, witnessed, and gone through whenever I've been in prison. And I may have told a few stories in the past. Mostly, I keep people up and informed about things that's going on in prison world and the news and things like that. But if you guys are wanting to hear more stories, I want you to go ahead and drop that down in the comments below and let me know that that's what you want out of this channel. And I'm also going to be dropping something on the community tab later on today, and it will be a poll so you can tell me whether you're more into the news side, keeping you up to date on prison things or the stories. So before I go any further, man, forgive me, man. It's been a few days. I'm sure that you can tell in my voice. I've still got this stuff going on. I don't know if I had strep throat or just a really bad sinus infection, man, but I've had the sore throat. I've been really stopped up and everything, and it's been pretty rough. So give me a pass on that, but I am here now. So like I said in that intro, man, the worst fight that I've ever seen. Back in 2002, I was in Georgia State Prison, and I was at this prison called Wheeler Correctional Facility, and this is in Alamo, Georgia. Now let me go ahead and clarify. Whenever I say fight, I mean literally that. I'm talking about guys off the hands fighting. Now, of course, in federal prison and some of the other places I've been, I've seen worse violence and, you know, people getting stabbed and things like that. Riots, small scale, little skirmishes between gangs. So, yes, I have seen worse. So you guys don't roast me in the comments, man. But I'm talking about just a fight. And whenever I say it was the worst Depending on who you are, some of you might be like, it's the best. It was the the wildest, the most entertaining, um, if you want to call it that. I don't know who's entertained by fights and who ain't, but whatever. I just know that this fight, it was pretty vicious, man. These guys were going at it like pit bulls. So without further ado, let me go ahead and get into that and tell you guys about it. Like I said, this was Wheeler Correctional Facility. This was in the 700 unit. Now, I haven't been in prison in many years. I've been out of the feds for five years. I got out of state prison in Georgia way back in 2004. So some of the names I'm not going to be able to remember. It has been quite a long time. But I do remember that I was in the 700 unit. If anybody's watching this channel and they've done time at Wheeler, you know where that's at. At the time, I went over there because I had gotten into a fight. I was on the other side of the prison in the 100 unit. That's going to be a whole nother video because... That story is actually one of the worst fights I've ever been in myself, and I'll tell that on another day. But because of that fight, I got moved to the 700 unit. Now, they put me in, I think it was X, 700X, or maybe it was Y. It was X and Y. Either way, I was in one of them, and it was basically a dorm where people that were in the intense substance abuse program, which they called ISAP, would come out of that and go into that dorm when they were done with the program and they were right next to each other. So you had one dorm that was the drug program and then the dorm next to it where I got moved for that fight. And those guys were coming out of the drug program. So I got to meet a lot of guys that were in the drug program. And one of the counselors there, he was from my hometown and he kind of took an interest in me. I was young, I was wild. And he was like, man, youngster, you know, your mama was a drug addict and stuff. Just long story short, he kept trying to talk me into going into the program. Now, I've never been a drug addict, and I kept telling him this. But he was like, look, you still have some of the issues because you're a child of a drug addict, so you could get something out of this. Well, after a few months, he wore me down. I moved into the unit, and at first, the unit was pretty sweet. Half of the beds would be empty because it was only for drug participants, so... You didn't have nearly as many people in the dorm and all day long they would just have groups and things like that and sometimes we would get privileges that some of the other guys didn't get if we did our groups good and everything we would get tvs come into the unit blah 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 watch movies anyway so there was this guy in there and his name was slim i'm not going to say what his real name was i do remember his real name but his name was slim he was a white dude okay about six two slim and me and him got kind of cool. He was from up north Georgia. So we used to kick it all the time. 
and he was really funny. He had this personality where he was always joking, you know, but you could kind of tell that he could take care of himself or whatever. But he always used to tell these stories in the groups and everything, these wild gangster stories. And so a lot of people didn't really believe him because he was such a laid back guy and funny and jokey. So he would tell all these stories about robbing people and getting into fights and doing all these things. And, you know, people just kind of used to side eye him like, really, dude? Yeah, right. He was friends with two guys that are what you would call gypsies. I don't know much about that, so I can't really speak on it. But they were from North Georgia and they were from his hometown. I can't remember their names, but one of these guys is one of the guys that was first involved in this fight and kicked off this whole incident. So you've got Slim, the guy that I'm cool with. These other two guys who were gypsies, one of them, we'll just call him Jack, okay? Jack is one of the guys who got in this fight. This other dude, I can't remember his name at all, but we'll just call him Tim, okay? So what happened is these dudes were playing cards and they were gambling. In this dorm, you had like little four or five foot concrete walls and that was what separated all the best. So they're called cubes or cubicles. So you could sit down on the bottom bunk and on the floor by the locker boxes and stuff and the guards wouldn't be able to see you. So the guys used to sit down there and they would gamble. So you've got Tim and Jack gambling, okay? You've got Slim, the dude who is cool with Jack. And here's another guy that they call Train. Big Train. He was probably six foot three, weighed like 300 pounds, just a great big huge guy. He was friends with Tim. So you've got four individuals. I know that's a little complicated, but just follow me. You've got Slim, who is cool with Jack. Then you got Train, who is cool with Tim. For whatever reason, I was standing in the day room, minding my business, looking at the TV. We hear a commotion behind us, back in the cuts is what they called it, bumping around, dudes going at it. So we turn around, and it is Tim and Jack. They have obviously gotten into an argument over the card game, over the gambling, which is how a lot of fights happen in Georgia State Prison. So these dudes are literally beating the dog shit out of each other, dude. They are standing up, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Every single lick they're throwing is hitting each other, and they are bouncing around off these metal locker boxes, and it is literally, like I said before, a pit bull fight. After about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, they are both covered in blood and it looked like they just had little chunks of skin missing out of them i don't even know how it happened i don't know if it was happening from bouncing off the metal or what they would stop take a break for a second and then go back at it dude these guys were just hooking for at least two or three minutes straight well train who was cool with tim kept getting closer and closer to the fight, looking like he was going to try to jump in and have his homeboys back. So, lo and behold, Slim is over here, the guy who was jokey, cool, laid back, told all the gangster stories, but nobody really believed him. He looks at Train and he says, hey man, back up, back up. And when he said that, Big Train, who I told you, is about 6'3", 300 pounds, huge guy, just goes off like, screw you, man. You ain't finna do nothing, blah, 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 blah. So they start arguing back and forth. And the other two guys actually stop fighting, catching their breath, looking at them. Now you've got cubicles on both sides. Then you've got the walkway going down in the middle that you can go all the way to the back cubicle up against the wall. So these guys that were fighting, they're off over here taking their little rest off in the cubicle. Well, Slim and Train are in the middle of the aisle here. And Train is like, man, you ain't finna do nothing, nothing, taking off his necklace. When he goes to take his necklace off and put it down in his shoe, Slim kicked him square in the face with his boots on. He kicked him so hard that it stood him up and dude grabbed his face like this, almost like he was just going to fall out. And dude, Slim put hands on this man so bad he was probably the second cut down the aisle, and there's probably like six or seven cuts. Slim started hitting this joker right in his face, and every time he was hitting him, he was beating him towards the back of the unit until he got to the last cut, and he went to sway this way, and when Train tried to do like this, Slim hit him one last time with an uppercut and literally knocked him clean out. Train fell like a tree and smacked his head on the bunk. 
and then fell over onto the floor. And I didn't even know and realize what I was doing at the time, but I ended up being back there. So I guess as they were going towards the back of the unit, I was walking with them looking. I ended up standing over train and looking at him and it, I thought that he was dead. I literally thought he was dead. He took such a beating in those little 15 seconds and then smacked his head on the bunk whenever he hit. I thought he was a goner. Now, keep in mind, all of these dudes are white dudes. I don't know if I said that before, but forgive me if I didn't. All these dudes are white. That's neither here nor there, but still. At this point, when Train hit, some of the other guys, because this was a drug program and it was kind of like not be in prison inside prison dudes were supposed to be responsible some of the guys ran to the front to try to go get help for this man mm -hmm. so they could come in and take him off the off the floor i turned around and got back up towards the day room and as i'm going back the other two dudes have already picked up and started fighting again i guess they watched that action until it was done and over and when they realized that that was done and over they went back at it again so when those guys went to beating on the door to get the police to come, finally, when the cops got there, those two dudes were still hooking, beating the dog shit out of each other. Train is back there laying flat on his back. I don't even know if he's alive or dead. And Slim is standing at the front of the unit, hollering at the top of his lungs, I told y'all, I told y'all I was a fucking killer, but nobody wanted to believe me. <laughs> so, anyway... Literally one of the craziest things that I've ever seen because this dorm was supposed to be basically a good guy dorm. It was the drug program. Guys were in there to get some time knocked off their sentence for taking the drug program. And we had privileges that other parts of the prison didn't have. And this whole war scene took place. They had to come in and get trained on a stretcher. The two dudes that were fighting and had beat the hell out of each other ran into the showers to sit down to try to hide, but they did get caught. They took Slim out. We never saw Slim again. They transferred him off the yard to somewhere else. Train ended up being okay because they moved him to the other side of the prison and I ended up seeing him on the rec yard. But dude, he took a hell of a brutal beating that day. The other two guys, we never saw them again either. I don't know how they turned out, but one of the craziest fights, like I said, that I've ever seen. There was no knife play, no locks, no weapons or nothing. It was just straight off the hands and it was brutal and vicious. And that is it, man. That is one of the worst ones that I have seen off the hands. So hope you guys enjoyed that story and the content. Forgive me, man, if I wasn't really a good storyteller. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Until next time. Ooh.